welcome to the second level of groundwork exercises we are using to prepare my six-year-old Mustang Dodger for under saddle work. First, we're going to run up at him like an excited toddler and rub and tap him all over. I want my horses to be able to handle surprises and anything and everything running up and touching them before I ever get on. This exercise is not meant to flood a horse that has not been adequately prepared to handle fear, but rather to teach him that he doesn't need to spring into action every time he's touched or startled. I'm not asking him to move, and I'm not threatening to hurt him. So touch and movement are beginning to have less meaning to him the more we practice this. I jump around, play the bongos on his butt, walk around all sides of him. If your horse runs off when you do this, go back to the first step from part one of this series until he's calm with just the rubbing before trying the run, jump, and tap again. It's important to notice when he gets tense and needs a break. I just let him calm down, and then I go right back to being a toddler with no manners. The next step builds on our previous backup exercise. Now that we've practiced stepping back in a somewhat straight line, and he understands what I'm asking, I'm going to increase difficulty and ask him to drop his head. Your horse should already respond to pressure on his pole by lowering his head for this to be successful. Anytime his head goes up, I ask him to lower it while maintaining the backup. Don't forget to release when he gets it right. To add to the hindquarter yield exercise, we are going to transition the cues that we will use in the saddle. I'm going to use a small crop to fill in for my leg here. I start by tapping his flank right where the rear cinch would go, which is the leg position that cues the hind legs. I tap rhythmically to ask him to move off the pressure, give him a few seconds to process, and then add the cues that he does know, me leaning towards his hindquarters. I reset and ask again, and he immediately understands the cue. I will practice this 10 times in this direction before moving to the other side. Since horses don't generalize, we will have to start the same process all over on this side. We will now do the same thing for the four quarter yield. I have already taught him in previous sessions to move off of pressure on his girth area directly behind his elbow. So this is an easy transition for him. I want to make sure he's only moving his front end over and not moving his hind end or walking forwards or backwards. This takes patience. The next task is to put the hindquarter and forequarter yields together and ask for a side pass. We start by tapping his side in between where the two cinches will lie. He responds with a hindquarter yield, so I immediately slide up to the girth to simultaneously ask for his shoulder to yield and release when he moves both front and hind over. I will ask again by tapping his side and give him a few seconds before then using cues he already knows for both fore and hind yields. This gets sloppy sometimes, but practice makes perfect. Now we are introducing the bridle when flexing. This is the time to make sure he responds to the bridle, or in my case a side pull, just as well as the halter. We do this 10 times each side and aim for softness. Next is the really fun part. In part one, we used a blanket to rub all over him and get him accustomed to something moving around on his body. Now we will replace the blanket with a human. I lean on him and rub him all over, paying close attention to how he feels about being touched where my legs will go when getting on and riding. I'm going to be sure to rub my leg up and down his flank, over his back and croup, and let him see and feel my leg on the other side. You want to work both sides, not just the side you will be mounting from. I like to mount on one side and slide off on the other, so the horse gets used to seeing you in both eyes. Before committing to sitting on him, I want to make sure he won't panic. I keep my legs up and my center of gravity low, so that if he were to jump forward or startle, I can just slide off. Another important note is that I don't sneak up there or try to be super gentle. I'm just a human saddle blanket rubbing and flapping around. Eventually, once this is no big deal, I can safely put my legs down, but I still keep my center of gravity low the first couple times so I can quickly and easily get off. 
By the time I finally get up there and sit on him, he's more curious about what I'm doing and less fearful. I can now sit there for a minute and let him relax. Next, we move on to work with the saddle. Once he's been lunged several times with tack, we can start ground driving him. I use two lunge lines attached to his bridle and run through the stirrup so that I can steer him as if I'm riding using reins. I use the same verbal cues he knows from lunging to cue him to walk, trot, and woe while adding the increased difficulty of pressure from the reins to teach him to follow the reins while also moving forwards. It's best to use this opportunity to be unpredictable with direction, so he isn't just following the fence, but actually listening to the rein. With level two of groundwork conquered, we could start the first step of riding and put weight in the saddle. I have a helper to hold and reward Dodger while I work towards getting on. I want him to associate this process with reward and relaxation so that he has no reason to fear. Anytime he stands nicely at the mounting block and tolerates my weight, he gets a handful of hay. If he ever stops eating the hay, we know he's gone over his fear threshold and into sympathetic nervous system mode, otherwise known as fight or flight. Thankfully, he remains calm and I feel comfortable enough to get on and flex him. You can see he tenses up slightly. Getting off and back on and allowing him to think about this is essential and he happily continues to eat his snack. Don't forget to join us next time to see if all this groundwork pays off or not. Thanks for watching.